Hey guys, David here from Goguda55 Tech Tutorials, and today I'm going to be showing you how to replace the thermal compound on your CPU. Okay, so let's get started. So if your CPU has been running hotter than normal, and you've noticed that your computer has also been running more slowly, this might be a result of the CPU getting too hot. When the CPU gets too hot, it does what's known as thermal throttling. Basically what happens is the CPU tries to cool itself down by working less hard. Since the CPU is working less hard, this also means that your computer is going to slow down. Replacing the thermal compound that transfers the heat from the CPU to the heatsink might be all that your computer needs in order to get it to run at its normal speed again. The first step is to unscrew the heatsink from the CPU. My heatsink is held in with four Phillips screws, so I just grabbed a Phillips screwdriver and I'm just unscrewing that now. Next you want to disconnect the fan from the motherboard like I just did, and you could go ahead and lift off the heatsink. If we take a closer look at the CPU, you can actually see that the thermal compound that is on there right now is quite dry. It's cracking up and there are also places where there is no thermal compound, so this is an indication that it needs to be replaced. It's the same thing with the thermal compound that's on the heatsink. You can see that it's quite cracked up, so in order to do this properly, that's going to have to be removed as well. Okay, so now to clean off the current thermal compound, I've just gone ahead and grabbed a piece of tissue, and on that piece of tissue I've just placed some 99% rubbing alcohol. The percentage of rubbing alcohol really doesn't matter as long as you make sure it's dry before you plug in and turn on the computer again. It's actually a myth that water damages electronics. Water will only damage electronics if there's electricity involved. As long as you make sure that the computer is unplugged and you've hit the power button a few times, you should be fine using a lower percentage of alcohol. That being said, a higher percentage of alcohol is theoretically less likely to cause damage because it's going to dry more quickly. However, as long as you make sure it's completely dry before you plug it in and turn it on again, you should be just fine. Okay, so now I'm just going to give it a few blasts of compressed air just to make sure that the alcohol is completely dry and that there are no remnants of the tissue left in the CPU or CPU holder. Okay, so now I'm just going to go ahead and do the exact same thing on the CPU cooler itself. I'm also just going to give that a blast of compressed air, and now we are ready to apply the new thermal compound. Okay, so now all you need to do is take your tube of thermal compound and put a little more than a pea-sized amount in the middle of the CPU. Your thermal compound really doesn't need to be anything fancy. I'm just using a tube here that I picked up at Canada Computers for about $8. Okay, so once you've done that, you can go ahead and reinstall your cooler. Just wiggle it around a bit just to spread the compound compound and you could go ahead and screw it back down. The pressure from the screws in the cooler is basically what's going to spread the compound. You're gonna to wanna to make sure that you reconnect the cooler's fan to the motherboard, and once you've done that, you can go ahead and plug in the computer again and turn it off. You should see the fan spinning, and you also just successfully replaced the thermal compound on your CPU. So thanks for watching, and I hope I helped. If you like this video, don't forget to click the like button down below. Don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe for more, and also don't forget to check out my Facebook and Twitter page. Also, don't forget to check out my website at www.gugudafitfivetechtutorials.com. All the links are in the description below. <laughs> <laughs>